<laughs> um, you know another good another good South Park thing another good South Park thing that I stole from them a long time ago was there's this video of them talking about storytelling. Have you seen this where they're like no. uh, they're like we have one trick when it comes to storytelling one rule when it comes to storytelling and um, they, it's like they're teaching a class I think on storytelling and they go anywhere you can say and and then this happened he's like you know what when a kid tells a boring story they're like. I came from school and then my mom said this and then she said I can have some candy and then she got, I got the candy and then it's like dude, this is the most boring story ever just you know kill me now <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> you know and then is that, that key word where you're not providing any twists and turns that would make this an interesting story you're just layering on more shit more shit more shit and so they're like swap that with a but therefore so it, instead you would say I came home from school and asked my mom for candy but she wasn't home and she's always supposed to be home. Therefore I went outside and I started saying, mom, 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 mom. But the only person who was there was this, uh, my neighbor who's always creepy, blah, blah, blah. And so, but, and therefore make for an interesting story. Whereas, and then makes That's for good. a boring story. So they can literally take a script and just cross out all the sort of like, and then uh, types of, of, of connector words and replace them with a button. So, or a button, therefore. Someone tweeted, um, why do you like my first million? And we got like hundreds of replies. And the common thread was, um, Sean just oozes and drips charisma. And his storytelling <laughs> is so good. And it's just addicting. And Sam, Sam has a funny there. laugh. <laughs> 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 One guy goes, <laughs> Sean, Sean's got such good stories and he's such a great storyteller. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on there. I think because I retweeted it. So it was like, you know, people who like me, I guess, who were, who were replying. But um, yeah, they were like, you know, uh, the the experience, the stories, whatever. I was like, I feel like your experience, the stories, and like crazy weirdness is what makes the podcast tick. I really believe that. I think. Oh, here's another compliment I got for you. I was actually going to start the pod with this. I forgot. I was when we were at that, um, like you know, weekend retreat or whatever. Uh, I had asked somebody a question. I was like, because I'm trying to think about what to do in my life, right? I'm like, okay, sold Milk Road, thinking about what's next, and I was like. Okay, I think life comes down to like picking the right thing to want. So like picking what you want and then bending reality to make it happen. Yeah. And picking the right thing to want in the first place is almost even harder than becoming a reality bender. Like at this it's point, I harder. believe I'm a reality bender. That was hard, yeah. but that was the first 15 years. And now I realize, oh, shoot, if I am a reality bender, I better pick right. And so I said, so I asked somebody, I go, I go, who was there? I go, man, who do we know? Who, who are our examples of people that I feel like they pick the right things to, to care about and to work on and like go for, like they pick the right goals basically. And then they bend reality and make them happen. And I was like, who's like a plus at both of those things. And I thought I would have this like handful, like just like a, a basket full of examples that I could just be pulling out from for inspiration. And what I found was that even the people who I think are super smart, most of them were picking like dumb things to, to think about, care about, work on, right? Like they were not picking well. And then a bunch of people who picked well weren't ever going to bend reality to their will. It was like, yeah, I talked to him five years ago, still wanted that. Here we are five years, five years later, you know, no, no real progress. You know, they're still just trucking along kind of like they don't really, they haven't really figured out how to make it happen. So like, I'll give you some examples of what I mean by this. So we have a buddy. I'll kind of pick on him. I'll pick on him, but I won't say his name. Very successful, probably worth, I don't know, 100 to 200 million. Um, I feel like has just been batting a thousand, like just had wins ever since the age of like, you know, 24, like just kind of first thing worked in a small way. Next thing worked in a big way. Now they're doing a new thing, you know. That's, you know, or in between, they invested in a bunch of things, good, good investments. Um, now they're doing a new thing. It's sure enough, it's working and they make it look easy to the point where I was jealous. I was like, damn, this person makes it look easy. And I'm like, but the problem is, and I even told them this, I go, I feel like you beat the level of this video game. And then instead of going on to the next level, you just hit reset on your Super <laughs> yeah. Nintendo and played that same level again. 
And you're doing that thing where you're just almost like trying to speed run that same level, like perfect, you know, like people who play Mario and they're like, I'm going to perfect this level. Right. It's like, dude, just go to the next level and have, have a different adventure, have an Im- improved adventure, right? Like more challenging or more interesting or say? just new. And they were, at first they were like, when I told them this, they, I was like, um, they were starting a new thing. It was working. Everybody else was patting them on the back being like, you done it again. It's working. I can't believe how easily you're able to make these things work. And I was sort of like, I feel that way, but I also feel like you're playing the same level. Of course, you're making this work again. You already know how to do this. Um, they did a thing recently where they bought a company and they were super pumped that the company like, and it was a great buy. They made a great buy. They bought a company. It's not like they had a background buying companies. They just did it. They bought the right thing. It wasn't available on the market. They found the person. They convinced them to sell. It's making a few million dollars of profit a year. They're, they're going to pay back their whole investment in you know 15 months or something like that. It's a fantastic buy by all accounts. But why why are they doing that? What what does that bring to your life? You're already worth you know 100 to 200 million dollars. This two million dollars a year of profit is not doing anything except for distracting you from maybe what you should focus on, which would be something else. And um, it's kind of nitpicking, you know, like a you know somebody who's you know pl- amazing at, the, at a game. So I, I kind of don't want it to be. I don't mean it in a negative way. I just mean it in man. It's really hard to find somebody who picks the right shit and knocks it out the park. And what do I know? As I'm brainstorming, I'm like, dude, I think Sam is that guy. Because <laughs> I, I thought of a couple people, but I just like last night when I was thinking about this, I was like. Dude, Sam is the best example. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I remember when you were um, like, you've done a bunch of things where you're like, I'm going to motorcycle across America. It was like, like not what everybody else was picking. You weren't just following a herd. <laughs> um, you then immediately went and did it. So you've done a bunch of things that like, I feel like you were choosing. You didn't just do what everybody else was doing. And each one added to your like life value uh so it's like oh this trip across america right or this way to make a bunch of money uh you know because having a bunch of money gives me this like safety net and ability and ammo to go do cool stuff even after you uh so the newsletter was another one where it's like what the hell is this guy doing uh but you figured it out you bent bent reality to your will you made it happen and you were completely right right i i was like oh you're gonna do a content company and your answer is i'm gonna do better content <laughs> and i was like where's the disruption where's the technology where's the new platform what's the what's the pitch and the pitch was like yeah like you ever read this stuff man it's dry it's boring it doesn't even t- like it doesn't speak to us and i was like your plan is to be less boring. That was literally your business plan, right? Like that was literally yeah. your pitch deck for the hustle. Yeah. It's like I called it the Daily Show effect. I was yeah. like, we're just gonna be like a little funny. Yeah, I was like, dude, that is not a pitch. I remember I was trying to give you like help. I was trying to help a friend, and uh, it turns out I needed the help. And it so, was like, so stupid. It was so stupid. I can't believe it worked. If I'm being honest, like I was right in a way that it didn't become like a multi-billion-dollar company because no. you weren't doing some like crazy crazy shit but like so it, it may not have been the right investment so i maybe i was right there but but f- who cares because you were like dude i'm gonna own 90 percent of this and i'm gonna sell this i'm gonna have you know like whatever tens of millions of dollars in my bank yeah. account which will let me live and do whatever the hell i want by the time i'm 30 and then sure enough it's exactly what you did you bet reality to your will you picked the right goal you were like i'm gonna have this like huge financial war chest by doing the thing i know um, I'm going to have fun, build a cool brand and meet a bunch of cool people along the way. Like you did with HustleCon. So you did that. Then you were like, all right, should I do this Airbnb thing? You started thinking about luxury Airbnbs and short-term rentals and creating a portfolio there. And I was like, wow, how does he think of it? Like, what well, you, again, that's not where most people are going with the next step of their career. And <laughs> you started, and then you, and then the thing you've picked now, which we don't talk about too much now, but like, I'll the talk thing you've about it now, eventually. Yeah. I think is the perfect project for you. And it's the perfect project for where you're at. And I'm like, damn, he did it again. I even texted you this. I go, your project selection was so perfect. All I can do now is try to think of the second best project to pick <laughs> for, for myself. Wait, and what was my reply to you? Did you remember? Uh, you oh, you I were said, like, <laughs> dude, you had this. You you know, you stopped right or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I actually I, I don't want to say too much because then it'll it'll kind of give it away. But like, yeah, I had prototyped the same idea. Um, liked it, 
but I was like, you know, didn't have it all kind of figured out and I wasn't really ready to go do a new thing. And so I just kind of like, I took the, like the quick win and I moved on and you were just like, Oh wait, that's like, you know, that that's actually, you figured out the right way to do it and you're doing it and (laughs) it's amazing and it's going to work. So dude, I just want to say, I think you're that guy. And I think this is a really important thing to figure out is who are the people that you think, um, choose the right things to focus on and then are able to bend reality to their will. Cause that's like the one, two punch that is uh, like most important in life. And I think that, um, well, thank you for those compliments. You got by the way, one one more, one more. It's not just about work, right? So it's like fitness, right? If we showed that before and after, like you really like made it a point to get in phenomenal shape health wise. That's, and and not just like you're not just like shape, but like mobility, strength, athleticism, like things that actually like are de-aging, right? Like they're the reverse reversing aging rather than just how many friends do we have that just basically are like only focused on stockpiling success and money and you meet them and you're just like, dude, like you're just going downhill, right? Right? Like the aging is like, it's going at double speed. So yeah, you're making more money, but you're doubling your age rate by the stress, the lack of the bad lifestyle that you're living, right? It's like, it's not good. Um, and so that's very common. And I think you're uncommon in that. The last one is like, let's say family or relationships, that sort of thing too. Like, how do you make it a point to be good at that? Right. Choose the right focus. Or I want to have this great family life and then bend reality to your will. And so I think, uh, I really respect that, you know, about you. And I think that that's something that I'm looking for more models of that in my life, because, um, I now realize that that's the most important one, two punch. Well, thank you. I think not to make out with you on this podcast, but yeah, if you want, like (laughs) buy me dinner first. Uh, (laughs) But (laughs) I think you got you, you, we flattered you uh, with this tweet. So you got your ego. I was, I was, I messaged Sean. I go, God, these guys really hurt my feelings. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I think the, what I learned, the reason why I'm able to do some of these things. One, I think it was Guy Ritchie. He said something like, you are the director of your own movie. Uh, And whenever I heard that line, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I don't like this game I'm playing, but I also make up the rules. So I'm going to I'm going to make the rules to my game. game. I'm like, it's like I only have myself to blame if I'm not happy because I'm I make the rules. And so that kind of changed my perspective. And another thing I was working with Sophia Amoruso that she's um, the uh, nasty gal, this, you know, big company. And then now she's got business class, this new thing. She's her and I become great friends. And I, she was like, Hey, I need some help with my 2023 goal setting. And I was like, cool, here's um, my framework for doing this. Uh, let's sit down and sit for an hour and do it. And I was like, Sophia, how are you so successful? And you've never like written down like what you're proud of the previous year, what you regretted, what would make you happy to accomplish this year, what those num- like, I'm like, I was like, all right, so here's how much money you how much money do you want to make? What would make you happy? Okay, that number. All right, great. Let's work backwards and have a plan. All right, cool. What about, uh, I always do family, fitness, fun, finance. So I'm like, all right, what about relationships? What, what would make you proud in one year to be? All right, let's do um, uh, f- uh, your body. Uh, you know, where do you want to be physically? Let's write down a plan for that. And like, boom. So we just set aside this time. That was our worry time. This was the time where we're going to stress and we're going to worry about what's going to make us happy. And we're going to make a guess that, boom, that's going to make us happy. Then we're going to stress on this plan. Have we settled? Is the plan done? The plan's done. I'm not worrying about it anymore. All I'm doing is executing this. The worry time is done. Next quarter, I'll give myself eight hours on a Sunday. Then I can worry then. But between now and then, there is no such thing as worry. All that, all, all that there is is I'm executing the plan. The worry time already happened, and I've got scheduled worry time in the future. And so what I think a lot of people don't do is they don't spend enough time sitting down and saying, what do I want? What are the rules of the game that I'm going to play? And let's create those rules and literally write them down. And for the next some period of time, I'm going to follow those rules as best as I can. And then we're going to reassess, are those rules actually good? And I don't think people do that systematically enough. So you said something like, you know, I didn't like the way that the movie was going, but then I realized I'm the director and I could switch it. Like, what was that? point and what was the movie like before and then what what did you make a point to switch 